in the studio now. We have Leslie Liao, and he and Andrew Ryan went somewhere special, the Taipei Brewery. That's right. Now, Andrew is one of the few people in the world that could say, hey, follow me down this dark hallway, and I'll comply <laughs> unconditionally. <laughs> Not only that, but I'll expect something really good at the end of it. This time, it was beer brewed from 100-year-old yeast. I documented the whole process. Now, let's have a look. One day, Andrew Ryan asked me if I like beer. Being your run-of-the-mill beer-loving guy, I told him, of course. Then follow me down this dark corridor, he said. Check this out. If you don't work here, you're not supposed to go in, but we're going in. Come on. We're at the Taipei Jianguo Brewery, Taiwan's oldest brewery, which still functions today. See that building down there? With yeah. The red bricks? Yeah. That's like original, original. And see all these pipes up here? Is this all Japanese era? Uh, the red brick building is. And then the pipes. This is... You wouldn't know it, but hidden inside of this historical brewery is a trendy beer room. This is what I look like most Saturday nights at around 11 p.m. Oh no. This is pretty much what I look like. I'm pretty sure they took this from my likeness. <laughs> we get a peek at some of the exclusive craft beers that the folks here at the brewery are working on. But head brewer master Wu, who has been here for 40 years, has something even better in store for us. Beer brewed from 100-year-old yeast. There are a total of five of them, each one with its own distinct flavor. Master Wu tells us that these yeasts were left over from Taiwan's Japanese colonial era. The yeasts come from Europe, likely Germany, but Master Wu can't say for sure. How do the five beers taste? Well, let me tell you, I am in Smooth City. Andrew asks me which one of the five is my favorite, and this is what I have to say to him. They're all like really good to me. Like at this point, it's just like, um, like what, what you're asking me is just like, do you like the Olympic gold medalist in swimming or do you like the <laughs> Olympic gold medalist in running? Like the, oh, these right. are all excellent beers. But however much I drink, the fascination of what I'm experiencing keeps me sober. Yeah. This is like drinking the ancestors, right? This is what the ancestors drink. The fruit of their labor. This is, I am traveling in time via libation. Yeah. That's basically what's happening. 100 year old yeast, man, I never thought. <laughs> what was the last time you touched anything that was that old? That wasn't a building or something like that. I mean, something food related? This is gotta be the first time. I think so, right? My goodness. This is like, I feel like I'm drinking history right now. This is, this is absolutely astounding. Like, it's I, incredible. It's, it's almost like a transcendent experience. It's not even about drinking a good beer anymore. It's about, this is from leftover from like last time when this thing came into existence, the Japanese were running this country. Yes, that's right. So that would have been 1919, right? So what does it take to keep a yeast alive for a century? Well, for one, confidentiality. Andrew and I aren't allowed to see the yeast save for the bits that made it into the bottom of the bottle. Master Wu doesn't explicitly tell us he'd have to kill us if we saw it, but a look in his eye tells me that might be the case. Next, he needs to feed the yeast regularly. How does he do that? To make the beer, Master Wu says he takes a small piece of yeast and cultivates it in 10 cc of wort, liquid with malt sugars that eventually get fermented into alcohol. He cultivates the yeast for about four cycles, which yield approximately 125 cc of yeast. After that, he adds in more wort and lets the beer ferment. Once fermentation is complete, the beer needs to age for about five weeks. How does Master Wu feel about his role as caretaker of the yeasts? He says that he feels like he is the ferryman of legacy. To him, it's about not letting the yeasts die while he's in charge. He likened himself to a relay racer having received this yeast from the caretakers before him. Master Wu says there's still a long road ahead at the Taipei Brewery. It doesn't surprise me that Master Wu takes his job so seriously. It's more than obvious he loves what he does. He says that beer is a medium for communication and building bonds. He's more than happy to share with Andrew and I the experiences he's accumulated over the past 40 years. And as for me... 
I'm grateful for Master Wu's expertise, which has afforded me the chance to taste history. So how did you guys like the beer? I, I thought it was really fresh. Like, I was really surprised. You didn't think it was old. I did, didn't <laughs> taste old at all because the beer was freshly brewed, even though the yeast was pretty old. It was really refreshing, and I think you can see it on my face in the video. I was just fascinated by the whole experience. It was tasting history, tasting legacy, and that was what it was about for me. Yeah. So. I think the, the special part was definitely Mr. Wu, who, you know, Master Wu, who's yeah. been doing this for 40 years, you know, to have this you know, heritage passed along from him. It's just amazing. Super hospitable guy, too. Just yeah. lots of fun, all laughs, jokes left and right. You would th think a man with that much discipline in him, he would be a little more, you know, Serious? uptight about what he does. Yeah. But no. But he loves his job, Absolutely. definitely. Absolutely. really sure. cool.